You are given a reference. My name is Behrus. So you are given a reference about uh, Enron, and Arthur Anderson has been uh, totally wiped out. But what you have to say about Satyam? Price Waterhouse is still uh, flourishing. The unfortunately, I don't want to get caught in the Indian environment. So there is a famous saying which I, which I, we always quote outside India. In India, what you have as what is called as a lifetime pay. One of the foreigners <laughs> while traveling in the airport was asking me, "What is this uh, lifetime wage?" So I said, "The case will go on, will go on, will go on till the life ends." So that's unfortunately we have nothing to say on this. It's a it's a legal the backlog of the cases. The, uh, there are missionaries which are addressing the RTA Act has made made people more active, asking for why there is a backlog. But uh, many people, eminent personalities like Sholi Shuraji has went on, has gone on record and said it will take if the entire cases are to be cleared, it will take more than 200 man years with the current strength. So unfortunately, it's a lifetime bail. We go soft on implementation while we have volumes of rooms of books. That's the problem today for us. So that's what is happening in the Sanjay. What do you have to say about the successor of Ratan Tata, Cyrus Mistri? Yeah, it is the news which is clashed today. Uh, I I don't think it is a corporate affair, uh, the internal affair, and it is uh, it is for them to decide. After all, Ratan Tata is capable of taking his own decisions. I respect his wisdom. And wish him luck. With this, we move to our next question. Yeah, there's one right there. Can you pass on that? Yeah. No, my name is Sunil. I want to know how do we evaluate values in the corporate world? How do we go about doing that? The first step I would recommend is we, this book is emerging as a corporate gift. The corporates are now we have orders from corporates to so use this as an annual gift and then gift it to the employees. The first step I would say they have to distribute the books to all their employees. The corporates have to buy the books, and that will speak for itself. Yes, the value is all there. But it's surprise inside the book. There is another question which I preempted because somebody asked me a very interesting question which is related to the title of the book. I preempted it. It's an interesting answer I gave. We appreciate it. I thought I would share it with you. He said, "What is this a saint in the boardroom? A saint has nothing to do with wealth generation. What is this oxymoron? Is what? It's a professor from US asked me this question. I answered him like this. First of all, I asked him. Now today's world are the saints away from the wealth generation? First question I asked him, Javed Akhtar Sahib once made a statement. Gautama Buddha came out of palace and he went into wilderness in pursuit of salvation. But today, the modern saints are going back from wilderness to the palace. So that is the problem today. The saints are generating wealth today, he said. But Chanakya said, the satisfaction of the king and the dissatisfaction of the saint is a disaster for the country. A saint should not be dissatisfied. I take it for granted that a saint should not be indulging wealth generation. Then why did you give this particular title? Sorry, I have to use some props. I am not going to use any magic, but I have to use this for you. You will realize at the end of it what is this. See, this is a post-it sticker and this is, the, let's say, this is the corporate or economic lines scale. This and this, if they are separate, then he is a saint operating with detachment. But if I stick it on this, a post-it sticker, its peculiar feature is, it gets stuck, but when you want to remove it, can remove it without leaving the traces of the glue. So what, is, what we are trying to say is, this post-it sticker, this is a corporate economic landscape. Our hero Arjun gets stuck as far as wealth generation phase, but he gets detached as far as the dharmic accountability and wealth distribution phase. If I am biased towards the accountability and wealth distribution, this will not work. So I am attached as far as wealth generation, I am detached as far as the wealth distribution and the accountability and control. Therefore, our hero Arjun is the saint in the boardroom, I answered. It was well appreciated, appreciated by our foreign audience. What an amazing way of looking at poster, attachment with detachment. All right, for this, uh, the next question. From my, from my team, they had some questions they have been asking. 
Congratulations, sir. Uh, as an MBA student, uh, you mentioned about the downturn. Uh, do you think uh, derivatives is one of the prime reasons for the downturn? Yeah, the derivative, in the, in the words of Warren Buffett, is a weapon of mass destruction. I won't say derivative is the only reason, but the problem is people resorted to the derivatives. See, in the earlier days, what we, in the non-financial world, let's say in the manufacturing, uh, we have what is called as a creative destruction that created the economic development. But today in the financial world, the financial instruments are created which are emerging as destructive creation. So mind you, I am play, not playing with the word. It is creative destruction in the manufacturing world. Now it is a destructive creation coming up from the financial world. This derivative has definitely created problem. But why is it due to? It is due to the greed. It is due to this kind of uh, the valueless society. So the fundamental root cause. See, I am sorry to say, some of them mentioned about great names here, corporate names. I am sorry to say today, people in US with six digit dollar salary and who have an excellent career, who are young, who are educated from the best of the business schools and the law schools are being convicted. I don't want to name the name or being convicted for insider trading. But the problem is why? They have money but still why they indulge in it? It is because of the so called peer rivalry. My neighbor has done something, I want to do this. In the peer rivalry game, they play the game with a dollar, with a dollar sign emerging as a score. This is the problem. Life is a marathon and it is not a 100 meter race. So therefore, people are trying to make money as fast as possible. So fundamentally, we have to infuse character into the societal DNA. That's all will help. Alright, so this uh, the next question. Uh, the one more question which I, I, I raised because this may arise. Somebody asked me a question. This is not something similar to your mom who sold his Ferrari by Robin Sharma, one of the great electrifying speakers that we have come across from the US. One of them asked. I answered. The answer is for you. In Mark who sold his Ferrari, he was a criminal lawyer. He took up the ladder of the professional, a legal profession and climbed up and reached the top. Suddenly on reaching the top, he observed that what am I chasing for? What am I searching? He was feeling that he was not achieving anything. So therefore, he went to Himalayas and he seeks the blessings and guidance from the sages of Himalayas. Then the discussions go on on spiritualism, yoga, meditation and balanced life. Out of balanced life, from out of balanced life, he comes back to the balanced life. Whereas in our case, our hero has reached the top, but he fell down from the top. He doesn't know, does not know whether he can take the ladder again or whether he can take a ladder with full of values, can he win with values? These are the questions that were in the minds of the of Arjun, our hero. So the interesting discussions take place on leadership, real life corporate events, values, governance, and ego and positive thinking and so on. Both are a kind of baptism. But one, a one is a different one, the other is a different. The monk is trying to shed the, our saint the hero Arjun wants to regain. In short, the monk sells his Ferrari and our hero, he buys back his Bentley. But please add the rider with all 100% check payment and with all legal duties. So therefore, the difference between the two is quite significant. Thank you. Alright, uh, any more questions? If somebody's got a question in mind, this is the best time. Thank you. Alright, uh, Silent and listen are two words. So if you rearrange them, you'll find the same word. Listen and silent. We were all listening and we were all silent. That is the mark of a great speaker. Big round of applause for him. Okay, big round And it was our great pleasure to invite on stage Dr. Yaram Raju, the co author, for this amazing book. Let's have a huge round of applause as he comes and reads excerpts from this fantastic book. Respected Kabir Bedi, respected Bhatia, 
respected guests of the day and guests of honor. My job has been made very, very, very easy by my co-author. He has almost read the entire book for you and he made the presentation. And therefore, I am not going to read the book again for you or even expert excerpts because many excerpts have been read by him. All I would like to say is how did we go about this book? It's a very interesting story. Accepting knowing Dr. Durga Das as Mr. Durga Das when he was when I was asked to evaluate his thesis on corporate governance from Anamla University. It is Professor Elangavan who brought us together and thereafter the journey of friendship <coughs> continued. We did not see each other until the first draft was over. After the first draft was over, we met in Sharjah. That was the first time both of us met. I don't think there is any book written by two authors where the authors did not meet until the first draft was over. I think this will stand unique in that respect. Then he has also mentioned to you some of the uh, ingenuity of the accountants while uh, giving the clues for successful within quotes, successful garnets. I am reminded of one small story. You know, the, one of the top executives who lost his father prepared a, a, a golden box to carry the cop. And then it was mentioned the cost was around 10 lakhs. And the accountant was asked where to put this expenditure? Because my auditors are taking a lot of objection to putting this expenditure. Where can I put it? He said, very simple, packing and forwarding charges. <laughs> and that is what the accountants are doing today. And we thought that this book should open up the minds of the people into virtuous thinking. And when we wrote about values, Today you hear people telling, see in your days values are different sir, in our days values are different. Your values are different from ours. But I can tell you values are universal in character, they are not like your sense of moving up and down. If values are universal in character, why people say that your values are different from our values? That means there is something fundamentally wrong in the thinking and approach. We thought that this should be attacked and therefore we had written much about the values that go by. Collision of values, where it is occurring and what is the answer for that. And uh, we have, uh, <coughs> I would uh, only mention to you, Something we had written about ethical dilemmas, particularly many activities are neither good nor bad, but exist in moral space. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once remarked, the ultimate measure of man is not where he stands in moments of comfort, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. A company's value system is the guiding light in its hours of darkness, confusion and self-doubt and when it is faced with moral dilemma, a value system builds confidence, provides peace of mind and enhances energy and enthusiasm during trials and tribulations. We have tried to give quite a few illustrations in a number of places that will unfold answers to the daunting questions that haunt the minds of everybody who would like to, I mean, who would be at crossroads, which way to go when he pursues the lines of business. In fact, business ethics is itself an oxymoron. 
Because people say business and ethics cannot go together, but business ethics has come into life in a similar fashion. A saying in the boardroom, if people feel it is an oxymoron, it will come into life in the same fashion. It is not going to be an oxymoron for the simple reason this attachment toward detachment. And one interesting anecdote passed on between us, the dialogue was there between us. Both of us are parents of daughters. One of the most often things that happens with parents of daughters is this, that daughters get married, they go back to their houses. They are detached from us, but they are the most attached to us. And that is what made both of us think alike. In most of the transcript that we had exchanged between us in the early hours of the day, which used to script with his team of researchers around, and we used to run the script and then exchange our thoughts and then refine, refine, redefine. Sometimes we 